Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, I talked about some of the ways that we could uh, make this game look better and just kind of add polish and make it look like a, a final completed game. I think the best way moving forward uh, is to uh, start by letting our player uh, launch the ball when they want to, not just when we start the game and it automatically goes. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this ball into a prefab. So we're gonna take the ball from our hierarchy and drag it into that prefabs folder in our project window. Uh, as we do that, on the prefab in the folder, uh, make sure you reset that Y position. So take that, drop that down to zero. And then let's delete this out of our scene. So select it, delete it, because uh, otherwise uh, things just get kind of complicated and maybe confusing. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create a child object for our paddle uh, that's gonna sit where that ball was. So on your paddle, right click and create an empty. This will make an empty game object as a child of the paddle. Let's call that ball spawn. Uh, and then we're ready to go off into our script. So uh, open up your paddle, the player controller script. And we're gonna add two more variables to this. Uh, these are game object variables. Uh, they're going to be public. So public game object. Uh, the first one is going to be a reference to our ball. Uh, we're going to throw in our ball prefab there. And then the other one, public game object, this one is going to be the ball spawn that we just made. Uh, and then for this, I want to write a new function. So go down here under update, find the open curly bracket, find its closing one. Uh, make sure you leave this last one down here, otherwise bad things happen. Uh, so we want this to be inside of our class, but outside of update. Uh, we're going to start this just like the start and update functions with the void keyword. And we'll just call this load ball. Uh, we'll have an open and close parentheses. Uh, hit enter one time. Open and close curly brackets. And we're just trying to match the formatting of these other functions. We're going to call another function here in load ball called instantiate. So kind of start typing that out, I-N-S-T-A-N-T-E-I-A-T-E. -E. Uh, instantiate makes a clone of something. Uh, usually in Unity, it's a game object. So if you open these parentheses, uh, that's what it's asking us to put in first. Uh, the first argument is the, the object that we're cloning. So this is going to be ball. Uh, and then uh, the next one is uh, where it's going to uh, get created at. Uh, so the location for that is the ball spawn dot transform. And let's add a semicolon to that. Uh, we do want to make sure that this gets called right at the start of our game. So we start the game with a ball ready to go. Uh, so up here in start, uh, we're just going to call that function by typing in load ball, open and close parentheses, and then a semicolon. Uh, and now on our ball, so we go to our ball script, uh, we need to do some stuff here as well. Uh, because right now uh, the ball is getting its velocity right when we start the game, and we want to wait until we have input from the player to make that happen. Uh, so we'll move this around here in a little bit. Uh, the first thing we want to do is add another variable. Uh, this one can be private. Nothing else really needs to see this just yet. Uh, it's going to be a boolean, so private bool. Uh, and we're going to call this ball in play. Uh, let's set that equal to false just so we know that it's ready to go. Uh, and then here in update, we're going to write another if statement. And our first condition is going to be uh, if the player presses space. So we know how to do these. Uh, so if input dot get key, uh, there's a couple different ones of these. Uh, so we used uh, just regular get key in our player controller to move them left and right. Uh, and this returns true while the user holds down the key. Uh, we, this one we want to just press once. So that is uh, get key down. So this returns true that first frame the user starts pressing down the key. So this is kind of a one shot thing. So input dot get key down in parentheses. Similarly, we're going to go key code dot space. So when we press the space bar, this will happen. After that parentheses, we're going to add a second condition. 
uh, you can add multiple conditions inside of if statement. So this is pretty cool. So we say, so if we're pressing space and, so we need two ampersands there, uh, and as long as we don't have a ball in play. So we'll say ball in play equals two equal signs. We're making a comparison here. So false. So right now the way this reads is that if our player presses space and we do not have a ball in play, if those two things are true, then the rest of this, uh, first, we want to say that we do have a ball in play, so we can't run this again. So ball in play equals true. Uh, and then let's add a little more space down there. Now we can move this line of code from our start function. We'll highlight that and we'll cut it out and paste it down here where we want it. All right, so let's save. Save both of these scripts. Uh, head back to the Unity editor. And we need to do some setting up before this will work. Uh, so on our paddle, uh, notice we have our ball and our ball spawn. Uh, for the ball, we have to get the ball prefab from our project window. So prefabs, take that, drag it up into there. And the ball spawn, we want to get from the hierarchy. So the ball spawn here, drag that into there. All right, now let's test this out. Let's play, see what happens. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, as I move left and right, the ball moves along with this, with our paddle. Uh, and that's good. Uh, but if you notice, uh, the ball spawn now has a child, and that's where our ball is getting uh, cloned at. So check this out. Uh, when I press spacebar and launch this, it launches and plays around. But if I move my paddle, oh, that ball is moving <laughs> in a weird direction. Uh, and that's because... Uh, the ball is basically a child of the paddle. Uh, so as we launch this, we need to take this out of this hierarchy and just put it in the main scene. So to fix that, we'll exit play mode, head back to our script, go to our ball script. And so when we press space, we're putting a ball in play. Uh, that, that lets us just not press space over and over again and set our velocity whenever we want. Uh, so after that, uh, we're going to use a function called set parent, and we access that by going to our game object dot transform dot set parent. Uh, and what do we want to be the parent? We would tell that in parentheses. Uh, we don't want any parent, so we say null, and then we add a semicolon. So if we save that, come back, we'll try one more time, and you can watch this happen. So there's our ball. We're going to launch. And now that ball went all the way down to the bottom there. And now we have a bit more of a functioning game. Uh, probably the next thing that we're going to do is add a little more functionality so that uh, if we miss, oh no, I missed the ball, uh, that we can reset and get our ball back. Uh, that would invite things uh, such as like a life system so that if you if you run out of lives, then the game is over. Uh, so we'll work on that next time. Uh, so come on back. Make sure before you leave, uh, make sure you save your scene. So file, save scene. Oh, I have to be out of play mode to save my scene. Let's try that again. File, save as. And then we're good to go. So join me next time, and we'll do some more cool stuff.